Namibia lies in southwest Africa. The Namib Desert stretches for almost 2,000 kilometers along the coast. To the north, the desert is crisscrossed by several dry river valleys. One of them is the Huanib Valley. It runs through the desert for several hundred kilometers and ends in the sea. Water flows here once, at most twice a year. Only deep-rooted plants like anna trees can survive here. Only here, within the valley, can mammals exist in the long term. It is the home of the desert elephants. In contrast to their other African relatives, desert elephants live in particularly small family groups. They are so rare and their way of life is so special that they're under the constant supervision of scientists who have also given the elephants names. The head of this family is alpha cow Clarissa. The animals don't leave her side for a moment. Only Clarissa knows how to survive in this extreme environment. The shoots of the anna tree are now ripe. The pods contain protein-rich seeds. Clarissa has known every one of these trees since her childhood. Even the youngest, Maya, tries the shoots. Here, however, experienced trunk tip control is required. It's easier for her to get the protein she needs from her mother's milk. Desert elephants only have half the number of calves as other elephants. The male animals stay with their mother's family until they reach sexual maturity. With mock fights, they prepare for life without the protection of the females. Adult bull elephants are loners or travel in small groups. Jappy is the most skillful of them. His younger brother watches enviously as Jappy brings down apparently unreachable branches from the tree. In the valley, Jappy is well known for such tricks. He learned them from his father. Friendship among bull elephants has its limits. Jappy is certainly not willing to share his branch with his younger brother. Their father, One Tusk, is now nearly 60 years old. His trademark is the missing right tusk, lost long ago in a hierarchical battle. For years, he was the undisputed king of the Huanib. Now he lives in seclusion. One tusk's legs are weak. He can no longer keep up. The aging bull is already being watched by a male jackal, which lives in the Huani Valley with its partner. Jackals mostly hunt smaller animals, but they wouldn't turn their noses up at a dead elephant. In a side valley, Clarissa has discovered a further source of food. There's a wide selection of bushes, grasses, and herbs. The 
the elephant's climbing skills far surpass those of their savanna-dwelling relatives. This too is a form of adaptation to their special habitat. Old One Tusk has at last reached one of the Anna trees in the Huanib Valley. But Clarissa and co. haven't left very much for him to eat. He desperately searches for something edible in the remnants. In vain. For the inhabitants of the Namib, survival is hard. They're used to going for long periods without water. Many get liquid from their food or know secret sources of water. Regardless of size, every green leaf contains a minimum of liquid worth harvesting. Outside the dry river valleys, there is scarcely any vegetation. Here, only extreme specialists survive. The Namib desert beetle is no bigger than a fingernail. As all animals, it depends on water for survival and has developed a special strategy. Even the tiniest traces of dampness in the air condense on its carapace. In time, a drop forms, which then flows directly into the beetle's mouth. This way of life limits the distribution of desert beetles to those parts of the desert that see fog. But where does the fog come from? The Namib is one of the few deserts in the world that stretch to the sea. The cold Benguela current from the Antarctic cools the seawater to a temperature of 12 degrees Celsius. When the water reaches land, it evaporates in the warm desert air. Around 200 days a year, the desert is wreathed in mist, which sometimes extends hundreds of kilometers inland into the dry river valleys. The Benguela current doesn't only bring fog, it's also rich in fish. The animals that benefit most are the brown fur seals. Their colonies are often home to 100,000 animals. Right now, there's good reason for so many seals to congregate here. The mating season is just beginning. Everywhere, bulls are fighting for the right to mate. The strongest conquer a whole harem and then have their flippers full. After mating, the males disappear into the sea, 
They're not involved in bringing up the young. The fog sometimes penetrates as far as the Huani Valley. Now, even the biggest animals benefit from the moisture contained in the fog. Jappy and his brother can take on a lot of liquid from the drops of dew on the plants they eat. This allows the elephants to go without water for up to four days at a time. The pair are still on the move together. This will soon change. As the fog lifts, the sun illuminates a very special event. Families of elephants from other dry river valleys are on their way to the Huanib Valley. They're following the calls of their relatives, which they pick up via the soles of their feet as via a stethoscope. More and more elephants join Clarissa's family. Some of the animals haven't seen each other for years and exchange affectionate greetings. Jappy and his brother are also aware of the arrival of the females. When it comes to attracting a cow, in a flash, companions become rivals. Once upon a time, one tusk was also aroused by all the excitement. Today, it no longer has any significance for him. He wouldn't be able to deal with the confrontations with other bulls. His sons and grandsons, on the other hand, are very excited. For them, it's important to make the most of the female's willingness to mate and prevent others from taking advantage. In the end, however, Jappy only manages to achieve his goal by means of a trick. He abducts the alpha cow, Clarissa. While many of the inhabitants of the valley spend the night hours asleep, this is the time of the real desert dwellers. The Namib sand gecko is only active at night. In the darkness, the little predator looks for crickets and spiders. Like a frog's, its toes are webbed. This enables the lizard to seemingly fly across the dunes without sinking into the sand. But it also needs to be on the lookout. a sidewinding adder. Similar to desert elephants, beetles, and geckos, the snake has a hard life in the Namib. It has to hunt successfully to survive. Once it finds a good spot for an ambush, it goes to ground. The snake is a predator that lies in wait for its prey, relying completely on its camouflage. 